G'day folks, Ashley here and in this video I want to show you just the basics of how to do intercepts going inbound and outbound from the NDB using your ADF needle and your DG and heading bug. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first things you need to consider when doing this, if you're going to do this in real life, is uh, the actual DG, keep in mind, you need to keep that perfectly aligned with your compass. Now I've been on aircraft before where that needs realigning every 5 minutes or sometimes every 15 or 20 minutes. But either way, make sure your DG is aligned with the compass otherwise this method is not going to work. Secondly, the heading bug. Uh, in this technique I don't actually use the heading bug as a heading bug, I use it as the, as the track that I want to fly. The actual heading I need to hold, I have to remember that. But you'll see what I mean. Uh, the ADF needle, obviously in this particular aircraft it's a fixed card ADF and what I need you to do is, you don't have to, but I'd recommend uh, the rel relative bearing 360 that north, just have that at the top and leave that there, don't touch it because this method you don't actually change that at all. I believe if you start playing around with the heading and changing the card behind it, it actually makes it even more difficult. All you'll be using essentially is the ADF needle and these lubber lines. I believe that's what those orange lines are called, the lubber lines, every 45 degrees. The same ones are on the DG as well, and they obviously never move. But the ADF needle, all you need to do is just picture that needle on top of your DG. That's all you have to do. So in this particular case, the head of the needle is obviously behind us, and it's about 10 degrees to the left of the lower lubber line. So it's about there. So if I want to go straight to the end of B right now, I'd have to take up a heading of about 1, 1, or thereabouts. And that, that's pretty much it. Actually, now there's one more point that's very important. The track that you've selected in this particular case is 047. See, 047. I've picked an obscure number. That just also happens to be the outbound track for the NDB approach at the Trobe Valley Airport, which I'm tuned into. I need to intercept that track. Now, I've put the track there, and relative the heading, the head of the needle relative to the track that I want is in this case to the right. So if I picture it in there, huh, it's to the right of the track that I want. So therefore the heading I need is going to be to the right of the track that I want. So I'm going to make a left hand turn because I need a heading somewhere on this side because it's going to take me less time to turn to the left and to turn all the way around to the right. And when you're tracking inbound towards an NDB, you always have to follow the head of the needle. The, heading, the, he the head of the needle is going to tell you what direction relative to the track that you need to steer in order to intercept. So as we're turning, I'm trying to maintain altitude, uh, we're at a rate one turn. You can see the heading, the head of the needle is still further to the right of the track that we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intercept at about 90 degrees. Normally you'd intercept at maybe 30 or 45 degrees, but to speed things up, because it's a slow aircraft, I'm going to take a heading of about there. Oh, it's a little under 90 degrees, not by much though. So that's the track that I want. And you can see the heading bug is about... 15 degrees to the right of this lubber line, up, up, out there. So it's still to the right of the track that I want, but if I maintain this heading, it will continue to move around until it meets here. So what I'll do is I'll just maintain this heading, I'll try and maintain this altitude, and watch this ADF needle come further around to the left and get closer to the, NDB, uh, to the track that I want. Okay, I hope that wasn't too quick for you. Now, if you can see at the moment, if I just picture that ADF needle on top of my DG, it's about 30 degrees past the lower line on the left. Hmm, it's right about there somewhere. Very good. So we have about a 30 degrees to go. But 
I'll start reducing well not right now but normally you'd probably start reducing because uh, I am actually quite a fair way out from the Navo I'm not sure exactly how far I am but I'm going to wait just a little bit because I'm confident enough at the rate of the needles moving I'll have plenty of time to make changes but you always have to include the ADF needle and picture it on top of your DG as part of your scan relative to the track that you want. And so obviously you'd still be monitoring all these, as I have been, and keep an eye on that. Just keep picturing the needle on top of the DG. And when going inbound, follow the head of the needle. That's all you have to do. The needle tells you where you need to go. And if you're going outbound, guess what? It's the opposite. You do the opposite of what the tail's telling you. That's all there is to it. All right, I'm going to start the intercept turn now. And trying to keep it at rate one. It's especially important when you're actually doing an NDB hold. Forty-five degrees. It's not bad. Not bad. But uh, when you're actually flying an iPhone in real life, you wouldn't actually do 90 degree intercepts and then turn straight onto your head. You'd actually reduce the rate as you get closer to the track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look. Yeah, overshot a little bit. I did. Dear, dear. Look at that. See, the head of the needle, that's the track I want. Yeah. That's the track I want right there. Right? Looking at the DG. This is the track I want, and look right now, it's slightly to the right, about 5 degrees to the right. So I need to follow the head of the needle because I'm going inbound. And the needle needs to be past the relative bearing if I want to intercept that track before I get station passage. That's pretty close to it, but not quite. And so, if you use this technique, it doesn't matter what track you want. You just compare the needle to the track you want and make corrections as necessary. Let's go back to the actual track heading. Now, keep in mind, I've also got nil wind settings for this video as well. Even if I go straight on the 047, which is about there, it's just to the right still by about two or three degrees. Three degrees, I'd say. Yeah, it's close. It's within tolerance, but it's close. But the thing is, with a glass cockpit, with the ADF needle overlaid on top of your DG you can actually enlarge it and it's actually really easy to see five degrees tolerance either side of the track you want. Obviously that's one of the hard things with this is five degrees on an ADF needle is a very small area. I'd say that's pretty close. But I'll maintain this heading or this track until I get station passage which is about now. There we go. Normally you'd go start the timer and go outbound. Yeah. Actually yeah. Mm. let's just do that. I won't worry about speed or descending or anything like that. I'll just follow the track. And the approach. Now let's take a look again. outbound for one minute and then I make a right hand turn inbound 245 now as you can see 
with the back of the track that I want and it's slightly to the right so obviously in this case I would go to the left because the tail of the needle outbound would do opposite I only follow the head of the needle opposite the tail of the needle but anyway 245 obviously I'm not good on the time there One minute. I should have started the turn now. Two, four, five. There we go. And the approach is a one minute. Uh, sorry, it's a right hand turn. So I'm going to do a right, right hand turn. And once again, I'm not going to worry about the altitude. I'm going to stay up here. Uh, yeah, stay up there. Descend. Six hundred feet. That's terrible. Yeah, right one turn. So that way it takes well, the right one turn is a one minute to turn 180 degrees, or two minutes to turn 360 degrees for those that are not familiar with the right one turn turn. And as I'm turning, obviously I'm comparing the head, the track that I want with the head of the needle. It's not too bad. And I'll just straighten up quickly. Quickly. Look at that, it's not too bad. A little bit to the right. So there. About five degrees. And it's almost to five degrees. Give it a sec. It's very close to it. So using this technique, I haven't had to worry about what the relative bearing is in that. I just compare the head of the needle to where the track is, or the tail, and make the appropriate actions. Oh, it's close, it's close. Let's go on the track again. the heading there, either oh, it's just right of track. It's just to the right. Not by much. And keep in mind it's going to be more sensitive because we're getting close to the nav aid as well. But I think that's pretty good. So this method I find quite easy. But you know, pretty straightforward. And it makes it a lot easier. I'd say that's pretty close. I, I'm happy with that. And once again, if you've got a glass cockpit, you'd enlarge it and you can quite easily see in their station passage. Look at that. And you'd go outbound on the same track if you did a mist. Climbing back up to 3,000 feet. It's pretty straightforward. So I'll just keep on this track just for a moment. And as you'll see, uh, let's have a look tail of the needle is just to the left just to the left probably I probably need to turn right just a little bit but it's pretty good what I'll do is I'll go back on the exact 245 heading let's see what happens ah uh, yeah it's a little bit to the left oh, and I need to go a little bit to the left see that's about it there. What the track I want. And the tail is just to the right, so I need to go just a bit to the left. Opposite of the tail. Easy.